Time hasn't been all that kind to Donkey Kong Country Returns. While a smash hit in its own time that brought the Donkey Kong series back into prominence, and a damn fine game, it's the only game in the DKC franchise that lacks a niche to call its own. Donkey Kong Country revolutionized graphics for a time, and remains the quickest, most arcade-like romp. DKC2 perfected the classic series formula, and has the darkest and most surrealistic setting. DKC3 constantly changes things up to test the Kong's movesets in unique ways. And Tropical Freeze features sprawling set pieces that tell small stories all through its levels. <laughs> Compared to these trailblazers, Returns just kinda exists to get Tropical Freeze's foot in the door. A first draft that no one will claim is a bad game, but does nothing that its younger brother didn't do better. Except, like, blowing. <laughs> However, while not as individually memorable as a lot of the best stages in other games, Returns is littered with some really fun stages that make you go, Alright, that was pretty great. <laughs> and to give it an accolade of its own, it has undoubtedly the best chase level in the series. Get out! Stages where you run away from a big scary thing are no stranger to platformers. Crash Bandicoot practically sold himself on the idea of running away from boulders. Ba -da -ba! And the DKC series has some... pretty good ones. Meep. DKC2's Rambi Rumble features Rambi fleeing from an invincible giant wasp. But it's reduced in drama by how overpowered Rambi is. DKC3's Fish Food Frenzy is a slow escort mission variant needing to keep a fishy buddy well-fed, or else he'll take a bite out of you. But it's a bit awkward, and the more traditional chase in Riverside Race is pretty basic and simple. Next. Tropical Freeze's I Rate 8 furthers the storyline of the DK crew being chased by this massive kraken. Tentacles and ink spreading from all over to ensnare them in certain death. And that's good. But give me that same kind of fear in a traditional platforming level, not an underwater adventure. Next! Donkey Kong is at his strongest on land. Let me taste tension at my best. <laughs> this is a challenge that Muncher Marathon is more than up for. Starting off, the stage introduces its two main gimmicks to the player. Walls that require two rolls from DK to break down, and these spider-engraved pillars that slowly move up and down. Way too sluggishly to ever realistically get squished by them. All these barriers actually do is slightly <clears throat> slow you down for a second, as you jump on these giant sushi pieces topped with Masago and bounce mm -hmm. off to collect a puzzle piece. Kinda gross. But you're sure you can handle whatever's ahead as you pound down to bust this old log and... Huh. Something moved back there. Oh god, that isn't sushi! That isn't sushi at all! <laughs> this horrifying little swarm is the Munchers. A ravenous, amorphous wave of spiders that will instantly overtake and kill DK and Diddy if they touch them. <laughs> and of all the things to run away from, yeah, an unbeatable infinite wave of tiny arachnids that will devour every inch of you from the inside out? That's a great motivator for getting the hell out of there. However, rather than present you with a particularly difficult platforming challenge, the Munchers present a different trap for the Kongs. A stage that's designed to slow you down and entangle you in their web perfectly. <laughs> Most chase scenes see players falling into pits they couldn't predict. But the munchers? Nah, they want to make sure they get you themselves. Those slow-moving crushing pillars? Those aren't there to actually squish you, but they do a great job of blocking your path and forcing you to wait when you don't have time. They're even placed at different elevations to make jumping directly from one to another really difficult. And if you happen to slide down the side of one while it's raising up, well, you're almost definitely gonna be spider food by the time it gets back down. 
barricades that take two rolls to smash through are obviously just gonna increase the tension as you curse their very existence. These frogs and fatter spiders that would normally be easy boost through the level are infinitely more annoying as you're gonna have to throw yourself at them the moment you see them whether you want to or not. And getting collectibles like puzzle pieces and especially the valuable Kong letters? Yeah, keeping your eyes peeled for them is gonna be an exhausting exercise. And more than a few times, going off the beaten path is gonna end up with an eaten ape. <laughs> But what really sets Muncher Marathon apart is how it weaponizes the player's own flight response against them and punishes them for it. The fastest mode of movement in Returns is the roll, with DK and Diddy together able to roll indefinitely with a huge burst of speed. However, this always sends the Kongs perfectly horizontal, as the roll jump mechanics of the DKC series lets them defy gravity for the length of a single roll. This is horrible for Muncher Marathon, as the terrain is so uneven and constantly requires the Kongs to duck down to lower levels, often causing them to bonk directly into walls with their rolls, losing time and potentially missing cycles on pillars. There are times where a player taking it slow and just running with DK would be able to navigate certain passages more easily. But that's not an option for some players, because oh god, they're bubbling out of the pits, I am going to die! Yeah, rip. Panic sets in as more and more munchers start chasing the Kongs down, encouraging the player to get away from them as fast as possible, and getting punished for any thoughtless rolls in the process. This is how a predator hunts its prey, knowing its strengths and disabling them through fear. Only with a steady head and the right combination of flight and forethought can a player safely escape the muncher's tangled web. After surviving a relentless chase, the player is given a checkpoint before being taken to a barrel course where they made a sinkhole of spiders to devour you. <laughs> this section is actually fairly easy. You can make quite a few mistakes while still staying alive, collecting the last Kong letter takes barely any time, and the level's over right after. But this looks so freaking cool! Muncher Marathon ticks every box for a great, memorable chase stage. The thing actually chasing you is suitably scary and unique. It creates an obstacle course that's not too tough given how fast you have to react. Bonus objectives are understandably a pain to get through. And getting past the stage offers a huge sense of relief that makes you never want to go back there but glad you made it through. It even gets bonus points for tying into the themes of the Donkey Kong series, DK upsetting the balance of nature he usually protects by waking up a spider's nest prematurely, incurring nature's wrath at its most frightening as his punishment. It is an amazing stage, and it deserves to be talked about more. Returns didn't nail the landing on all of its concepts, but there are moments in this title that are truly inspired, pushing Donkey Kong Country forward in ways that it never could have been on the SNES and weren't capitalized on in Tropical Freeze. It is the scariest stage in the series. It's the most exciting chase a Kong has ever been on, and it's just one of the truly outstanding levels of Donkey Kong Country Returns. <laughs> Hey!